Curious Lloyd. People think science is all testing and complicated calculations, but science basically points both middle fingers at the infinite wonder of existence and eventually comes up with some plausible theories. So in today's video, I should talk about these five science theories that will kind of pickle your brain. Well, I hope so anyway. Existence can actually ripple. If you throw a stone into a calm lake, the water ripples. If you were to smash two black holes together at half the speed of light, existence would ripple. They would collide so hard that you don't even need to hear anything because space itself is shaken up and down in a detectable way. But you've got to expect something amazing when 60 octillion tons of spherical singularity slam together. But Einstein predicted these gravitational waves over a century ago and their banging is so hard that reality is jolted. So by smashing space-time so powerfully, it wobbles like jelly. But we've already detected it. Two singularities slammed into each other like an ultimate subwoofer, blasting bass notes through the fabric of reality. Three entire solar masses were converted into gravitational wave energy, a process over 50 times more powerful than the entire visible universe. It was so space-time staggering that we felt the effects over a billion light-years away. But on September the 14th, 2015, every cell in your body was gently squeezed by black holes. The measurement was made by LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which you could say sounds like the most impressive thing on the surface of this planet. So it's basically a pair of set squares for space-time. Two vast L-shaped insulations, 2.4 miles long on each arm, and every micrometer is in a ultra-high vacuum, and they're on opposite sides of the country, so that they can use almost the entire Northern American continent as a 10 millisecond timing delay. But in each, LIGO lasers bounce back and forth between mirrors. The result is a ruler so accurate that when its reading varies, it's the universe that has changed. Detecting gravitational waves is so staggering that even working out the idea that it would one day be possible and earn someone the 1993 Nobel Prize for Physics. And now, us humans have done it. Antimatter is matter traveling back in time. Antimatter is pretty ridiculous. It's the evil opposite of matter, which annihilates it on contact with spectacular explosions. The thing is, we've not only detected antimatter, but we can also now make it out of particle accelerators and hold it in magnetic bottles for 15 minutes. Antimatter's most famous application is annihilating matter to release 90 million billion times as much energy. The Feynman Stuckelberg interpretation treats antimatter as matter going backwards in time. So when it hits regular matter going forward, it's not just two objects touching, it's a head on collision in the fourth dimension. But the best bit about this idea is that it already works in the equations. Antimatter inverts all kinds of important quantities, but instead of inventing a new mode of matter, you get the same effect by multiplying time by minus one. After all our science fiction and magical fantasies, it turns out the real time traveler was inside our state of art particle accelerators all along. So maybe time travel will be upon us soon. The One Electron Universe. Sometimes people like to speak deep you may ask questions like, what if we were all just one being? The most successful physicist in history did the same thing, but they did it with quantum mechanics and came to an even more amazing conclusion. John Wheeler was the physicist responsible for the little things like neutronic reactors, neutron moderators, and the word wormholes, and noticing that black holes maybe had something to do with gravity. He also came up with the idea of the one electron universe in which every electron in existence, in your brain and your body, were all from the exact same electron, which travels back and forth in time to be every single electron. Wheeler discussed this idea with Richard Feynman, and when Feynman didn't call it a lie on the universal electronic reincarnation idea, it's a real mind blower. Feynman discussed the idea in his Nobel Prize acceptance speech, assigning it with a given rise to the time-traveling antimatter from the previous part of the video. One of the most decorated physicists in history supports the idea that existence is even more than the same particle, simultaneously interacting with itself in every possible way. The idea works because electrons are utterly identical. We think of subatomic particles as tiny snooker balls, but snooker balls can't be torn apart. Every electron is exactly the same, 
They are not built. They are not carved. They are just tiny jewels of solid physics popping out of the fundamental constants of reality. But this isn't an obscure point. Huge swaths of quantum mechanics, which is what we call reality, which is running your computer, the human brain. You are even watching this based on this identicality. The only reason this isn't a scientific theory is that it cannot be disproved, but you can only accept it or ignore it. Space-time is a liquid. General relativity controls the bigger picture. Quantum mechanics takes care of the tiny details, but when they meet, they continue up through the even higher frequencies, which is ultrasonic. The record burns red, white, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, which is a blinding light feeding virtual peer production from infinite energies as it tears the grand unified theory apart, which also destroys everything you ever thought you knew about space and time. We've already got two amazingly effective theories for explaining the universe, but they absolutely hate each other. The quest to merge general relativity and quantum mechanics, or find something else to replace both, has given a rise to more physics theories than there are Transformers, and with even crazier names, and also more astonishing abilities. There's geometrodynamics, twister theory, M theory, spin foam, and countless more, and like all good Autobots, they really are working until all the forces are won. One such attempt is superfluid vacuum theory. It does exactly what it says in the name, modeling empty space as a frictionless fluid. In this model, all of reality as we understand it is like the waves on the sea. It looks like all kinds of action on a smooth surface, but that surface is really the result of a lot more particles acting in a particular way. So maybe empty space is just some simpler stuff doing its own thing. But studies of high energy X-rays and gamma rays from the Crab Nebula have already refined this theory confirming that if space is fluid, it must be utterly frictionless. So, even the most advanced scientific theories take time to look at those pretty lights in the sky. It's just that they might redefine that time in the process. Reality could break without warning. Buddhism says that emptiness is things not having an inborn nature. But physics says that emptiness could be a ticking time bomb of the universe rupturing an apocalypse which would also bring all the things to one in peace. The idea is that even empty space could break. We think an empty vacuum is the lowest energy state of existence, but if there is another low energy state below it, then our entire reality is thin ice over a frozen lake. Just one puncture would cause the whole thing to sink. An entirely new universe would radiate from the reality fracture point, known as a vacuum metastability event. Since even changes in the laws of physics have to travel at light speed, we wouldn't even see it coming before it hit, and we wouldn't even exist afterwards. We could lose all that exists if even the darkness between our stars is only a false vacuum. But the multiple universe version of this idea is even more fun. It says that the existence is a bubble bath of entire universes constantly popping out of existence, and at any moment, ours is just one that hasn't chaotically annihilated itself yet. This thought sounds like it's pretty implausible, but it was developed in a lab, and it's even been tested by the most advanced machinery ever made. When the Large Hadron Collider found the mass of the Higgs boson, we were able to calculate whether our universe is stable. And the answer is, ish. The required minimum Higgs mass for the universe not to pop is 129.8 GeV, but the measured Higgs boson mass is 125 GeV. So you could say our universe is pretty close to popping. But in physics, a number without error bars is a knife without a handle. The error bars on that minimum mass are plus or minus 5.6 GeV. So the safe value should be somewhere between 124.2 and 135.4 GeV. But we've measured 125.1 plus or minus about 0.2 GeV. So we're okay. But to narrow down those existential error bars, we need to make better measurements of something called a top quirk pole mass. But just pretend the scientists are right and accept it, and take it as they're working on it, just to keep us safe. 